깊이 묻힌 보배로다 나의 분발을 캐내어가져 갈자 그 누구랴 안심일세 빛의 원더풀 Coming down from the Father, that love is eternal. My heart is full. My heart is full. 전함은 주의 축복을 믿음이라 내가 주야로 주님과 함께 있어 내 영원히 편히 쉬네 빛의 원 Coming down from the Father, that love is eternal. May your heart be filled. 넘쳐나는 주의 축복을 받음이라 내가 주야로 주님과 함께 있어 내 영원히 편히 쉬네 빛은 원더풀 빛 Coming down from the Father, that love is eternal. May your heart be filled. 내 영혼이 은총 입어 중한 재짐 얻고 보니 슬픔 많은 이 세상도 천국으로 하도다 할렐루야 찬양하세 내 모든 죄안 받고 주 예수와 동행하니 그 어디나 하늘나라 주의 얼굴 뵙기 전에 멀리 뵈던 하늘나라 내 마음 속에 이루어지니 날로 날로 가깝도다 할렐루야 찬양하세 내 모든 죄 삼받고 주 예수와 동행하니 그 어디나 하늘나라 높은 산이 거친들이 도막이나 궁궐이나 내주 예수 
오신 곳이 그 어디나 하늘나라 할렐루야 찬양하세 내 모든 죄 사함받고 주 예수와 동행하니 그 어디나 하늘나라 아멘 
23번 23번 
And then grace will lead me home The Lord has promised good to me His worth my hope secures He my shield and the portion be As long as life endures When we Then when we first be God. Hallelujah. Amen. So let us pray together for the worship service. Dear God, thank you for your presence, and thank you for the days you gave. When we came here to worship and praise the Lord, and you gave such a beautiful voice and rejoice in you, God. Thank you for your presence and guidance, and thank you for sending us your spirit to all of us. We want to open our heart to you, Lord. We want to open our ears to your, hear your words. Come to us, touch us. Feel us in this time and bless all of us and restore our spirit and renew it in your love and grace. And bless today's speaker, Pastor Kim, and um, all the people who are here. Thank you for the time we can be with you. And thank you for you Che know, uh, and their voice and singing together in this time. We pray in your name. Amen. 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 I'd like us to open in the book of Old Testament Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 19 through 24. Lamentations, right after Jeremiah. Chapter 3. Verses 19 through 24. Remember my affliction and my wandering, the wormwood and bitterness. Surely my soul remembers and is bowed down within me. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. The Lord's loving kindness indeed never ceases, for his compassion never fails. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I have hope in him. Amen.
Today is January. Yes, this month is January, the new year. We started in New Year 2015. And I hope that this year will be a happy and blessed year to every one of you here. Praise the Lord. God has been with us faithfully last year and gave us a new year, 2015. Yes, we cannot thank God enough for what he has done for us throughout last year. Praise the Lord. According to a lead study author, uh, Rosalba Hernandez, she's a professor at the University of Illinois. Uh, she came up with a, a research here. It says here, individuals with the highest levels of optimism have twice the odds of being in ideal cardiovascular well-being compared to their a lot more pessimistic counterparts. Also, according to the researchers, people who have been thought of the most optimistic based on their survey responses have been 50% far more probably to record an overall health score in the intermediate variety and 76% a lot more likely to have a total score in the excellent range. Your outlook on life possibly has an effect on the wellness of your heart. In other words, a positive, sunny outlook on life leads a greater cardiovascular health. It's proven by, you know, uh, research. Uh, likewise, having an optimistic and positive attitude is so important, not only for our health, you know, but also our spiritual life too. When we are not optimistic, when we are not positive in our attitudes, then we tend to lose. If we are born again Christians, then whether you realize it or not, we are facing spiritual battle, spiritual warfare every day of our lives. Devil and Satan attack us whether we realize it or not in our lives. So having an optimistic and positive attitude is also important for us to fight against, you know, devil and Satan. So in our physical life, in our mental life, and also in our spiritual life, having a positive attitude, positive outlook is important. We already have an answer as to how we can have a positive and outward attitude and you know, outlook. <clears throat> if we have a hope, the hope which is unchanging and unending, then, you know, positive outlook and attitude naturally follows. If we do not have hope, then what's happening, especially those who do not believe in Jesus? They lose their hope and they try to commit suicide. You know? So there's a significant number of people out there who lost hope, committed you know, suicide. 
So having a hope in our lives is so important because that will result in having a hope in our lives. We can find this hope from today's passage here. The verse 19 is mourning of prophet Jeremiah asking God to remember his affliction and his wanderings, the wormwood and the gall. That was the descriptions of prophet Jeremiah's life. Although he was holy man, godly man, mightily used by God, God loved him so much ever since he was a youth. He was chosen by God to be God's spokesman, prophet. But all of his life during his ministry for the Lord was calamities, tribulations, sufferings, and he was treated like, you know, Israelites, like a worm here. Yes, Jeremiah suffered a lot and even risked his life several times. However, verse 21 marks a change in Jeremiah's attitude. Verse 21 says here, But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. He was uh, in desperate situation, hopeless situation. When we see here verse 19, but then verse 21, we see that he recovered his hope. It says here, I have hope. The prophet might have reflected on Exodus chapter 34, verses 6 through first half of verse 7 here. He says here, Then the Lord passed by in front of him, Moses, and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in loving kindness and truth, who keeps loving kindness for thousands who forgives iniquity, transgression, and sin. And then again, verse 22 says thus, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. Even in the face of Judah's unfaithfulness, the Lord's loving kindness has never ceased. Lamentations, this book was written by Prophet Jeremiah. The background of this scene is that Judah became a captive of Babylonian Empire and the city of Jerusalem definitely including the temple was burnt down the ground and many many Jews were deported to Babylonian country already so there was no hope in the eyes of Jeremiah but now here, he said, I have hope. And he recollected Exodus chapter 34, verses 6 and 7. God's compassions have never failed. The Lord's compassion or mercy goes the second mile. Replacing judgment with restoration. Also, God's loving kindness and compassion are new every morning. That's why verse 23 says here, They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. 
Each day presents another opportunity to experience God's great faithfulness and His compassions. Knowing this, Jeremiah hoped in God and said in verse 24, The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in Him. Jeremiah says that God is his portion. God is Jeremiah's only inheritance. Above all, the unchanging and unending hope is fulfilled and finalized through our Lord Jesus Christ. According to Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 6, when we believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, we are justified by faith and began to have a peace with God. When we have a peaceful relationship with God, then automatically we get to have a peaceful relationship with our neighbors. God declared us to begin with to be righteous by His grace. And as a result, we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. The second verse of here, Romans chapter 5, recorded here. Rejoicing in the hope of the glory of God means our anticipation, our hope of anticipation of the blessed life in heaven. Sometimes when it's hard on earth, when our lives are very hard on, our, you know, on earth, we tend to lose the greatest gift that God has given to us. That is salvation. You know, Whenever we recollect the fact that we are already the recipient of this salvation, then, you know, we have a hope living on earth. So let us remind ourselves again and again when we face difficulties in our lives throughout this year, 2015, that God loves us so much. God made us his children. What's the proof of it? It's, big, it's salvation that we received. Not only we became his children, but also we became co-heirs with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You may not see it on earth, but we are truly co-heirs with Jesus Christ. Let's remember that. And let's have hope. You sh we should not lose hope. Then we're going to have positive outlook. And we're going to have a really, really victorious life. When we have a hope, that will lead us to have a victorious life. Yes. As a result, we can even rejoice in our tribulations on earth. We can still have hope even in tribulations on earth because today's verse here 3 and 4 book of Romans chapter 5 it says here the tribulation brings about perseverance and then the perseverance brings about the proven character and the proven character brings about hope Hallelujah. Yes. 
So when we persevere even on earth, then the end result will be blessings for us. We will have the character like Jesus had. And then we will finally have hope which is unchanging and unending. The hope which is not temporal one. How? Even when we are under the tribulations. So we should have positive attitude. Because tribulation brings in the end unchanging and unending hope in us. Hallelujah. Yes. And the hope does not disappoint us because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Verse 5 says here, and then verse 6, Apostle Paul described the character of God's love. God demonstrated his love toward us by the death of his son, Jesus Christ. Verse 6 says, For while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. We are ungodly. We were. We were helpless before. Yet Christ died for us. And through this death of Christ, God proved his love to each and every one of us here. So we are so much loved by God. How? Because God even sacrificed his only begotten Son to save us. And we are saved. Yes. And we have salvation. We became his children. Why should not we have hope? We should have hope. Amen? Every day of our, every day of our lives. There is a reason for us to have hope. So let's start out this new year with unending, unchanging hope. It's in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yes. yes. Then God will take care of us the rest. Amen. According to Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness. Then all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's have hope in Jesus Christ. Let's believe in the promise of our Lord Jesus. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for your message. And then we have just a little time. By now we will do the offering together. Mike is on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh,
that for you? Yeah, I'm gonna sing. Hmm? So one verse. symbolism in that song is so beautiful. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock. The cleft of the rock is the sturdy part. The part where you can't be blown off. The part where you're protected and guided and directed. So we thank you, sister, for sharing that song with us. We are a denominationally background Southern Baptist Church, which means we are Baptist by denomination and Southern by culture, and uh, we thank the Lord for that. But we are also Messianic by Scripture. Messianic means Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus in English. Jesus in Spanish. Hello, hello. And uh, we praise the Lord for who he is and what he is in our hearts and in our lives. I'm going to blow the shofar because the Bible says we're to trump, trumpet the worship. Worship has been going on, singing has gone on, so we're going to blow the trumpet to end that portion of the por uh, service at this point and to begin the new portion of our service together as we come together as a total family. <laughs> says blow the trumpet and we've blown the trumpet the Bible says God will hear his trumpet 
And so we thank him for that. The Bible also said that when they traveled with God and for God, that they hung their harps and their cymbals and their trumpet in the trees where they would camp. They wanted their instruments to be up off the ground. And so they would literally hang them in the trees and hang them there. And that was a symbolism of the worship of God, the praises of God, and the victory of God, and the challenge of God. And so we now blow the trumpet and thank the Lord. Let us go to the Lord in prayer and thank him for this service thus far and then thank him for the remainder of this service. And I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Ronnie to come and lead us in a few minutes in some praise music. You know, we've been talking about our dear friend and pastor who has been in jail now for eight years. And all of it is bogus charges. I'll not go into the detail of that tonight, but uh, they're trying to get him to stay in jail another 20-something years. Why? Because he preaches the gospel. Not because he's broken any laws, but because they've trumped up charges against him. And I remember back there in the New Testament, Paul and Silas especially and all those other fellows were in trouble. They were in serious trouble. They had violated the laws according to the Jews and the Muslims and the Islamic people. They had violated the laws and they put them in jail. But before they put them in jail, they beat them. Severely beat them and put them in jail. And the Bible says over there in Acts, the 16th chapter, along about midnight been a long day. They'd been beaten. They'd been put in jail. And now they were in jail still. Paul and Silas, though, somehow, some way, got a little extra energy and said, let's have a praise and prayer service. <laughs> and so they prayed and they praised the Lord at midnight. That would be tough had they not been beaten. But it was even more tough. But they prayed and they praised the Lord. And the Bible says God heard their prayer. And brought an earthquake. And the earthquake loosed all of the prisoners. <laughs> not just Paul and Silas, but all of the prisoners it loosed. And the jailer was about to commit suicide because he knew that with the jail open and the prisoners gone, they would do to him what the penalty was for an escape. That is, they would beat him severely and then throw him in jail. And he knew what it was like to be in jail because he was a jailer. He also knew what it was like to be beaten because he had beaten many men. And so he said, the prisoners have escaped. And it was on my watch. The Bible says he was asleep. He went to sleep. When he woke up, the, prison, the doors were all open. But he didn't want to have to go through that and so he took his sword out and he was about to commit suicide and Paul yelled at him the Bible said stop don't do that nobody is gone everybody's here you don't have to worry about getting in trouble because the prisoners are gone we're all here and then he said, bring me a torch. Remember, they didn't have lights in those days. Bring me a torch. And he brought a torch in, and sure enough, they were all the criminals. <laughs> all the prisoners were still there. 
And he was relieved. But here's what he said. After the influence of seeing what God was doing. The Bible says he went to Paul and Silas and said, Gentlemen, what must I do to be saved? And the Bible says they led him to the Lord. His wife, his children, his in-laws, his outlaws, all his family came to know Jesus because of that jailhouse prayer ministry. And we praise God for that. And so let us pray for those that are in jail, incarcerated, especially those that are in there that are innocent. Let us have a worship service tonight, a praise, and then a pray. We've already had prayer. We've already brought the trumpet. So, Dr. Ronnie, come and lead us in a praise song or two, would you please? Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Well, praise the Lord. That's quite a good story to start with. Let's see if we can stir up a little bit tonight by praising the Lord. How about that? You feel like singing praises to the Lord tonight? Let's start with a little chorus. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Sing it with me. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. That's pretty good for a start. Let's try it again. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Good start. Okay, 135, what can wash away my sins? Hey, good answer. Oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. All right, you're ready. Let's sing it out tonight. Oh, I love this song. Don't you love it? Let's take a bath tonight. And let's get all washed tonight. Ready for the new day. What can wash away my sins? 135. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Sing it. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Naught of good that I have done, Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The last stanza says, this is all my hope and peace. Have you got peace tonight in your heart? There's one place to find it. That's him being washed in the blood of Jesus. Sing it with me on the last. This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Sing it out. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. Stand with me and sing it one more time. I want you to, before, before we start, stand with me now. And I want us to let Wayne Park hear about the blood of Jesus tonight. Amen? What can wash away my sins? Nothing, absolutely nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious, sing it out tonight. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, Dr. Ronnie. I want you to get another song ready for us in just a few moments because I want us to praise the Lord a little bit more for what he's done in our hearts and in our lives. I wonder if there's anybody that has a particular point that you'd like to praise the Lord about tonight. Anybody? Prayer request? Praise report? Good to see Brother Charlie and Miss Olivia back, and they, they, they came back with somebody with them. Who is that? Hang on just a minute. Let me get the microphone to you. Amen. Good to see him back. Good to have you back, brother. Welcome back. God bless you. Amen. Yeah, I would like to give thanks to the Lord. Got my youngest granddaughter with me and everything. We made it here safe. And I just want to keep my prayers up so I can make it home safe. Amen. 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 And what's her name? Nana. All right. All right. Well, thank you. God bless you. Grandkids are fun. I was with mine last night. You know, the biggest thing I like about grandkids is you can take them and play with them and spoil them rotten and then tell the parents, take them home. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Anybody else got a prayer request or praise report? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Brother Will uh, sought the Lord, and the Lord said, uh, you know, when you take a handful of leaves and roll it up, stick it in your mouth and set fire to it, that's sort of stuck on stupid. <laughs> and uh, so Will said, I ain't going to be stuck on stupid anymore. And so he's got now a couple of weeks of being away from stuck on stupid. And so praise the Lord. God's given him the victory and will continue that victory. And uh, he's talking about he smoked for over 50 years. It was over 50 years ago that I quit smoking. I'll never forget it as long as I live. I was about to get married. And I didn't have a gift that I could give my wife for our wedding because I was broke. And uh, she said, baby, if you want to give me a gift... The greatest gift you could give me would be to quit smoking. So on our wedding day, I quit smoking and hadn't smoked since. And I praise God for it. That's not to give me any credit because it was tough. <laughs> it was tough. But uh, God will see you through. And uh, some of you who are working on quitting smoking or trying to quit smoking... You ought to get with Will and have prayer with Will. Let him pray for you. See, the old devil will tempt you and say, well, you can't do it. Will's proof that he can, that he can't, that God can do it. Not Will, but God. So get with Will and let him pray with you and pray for you. And uh, Anybody else have anything they'd like to share? Anybody? Praise report? Prayer request? We need to continue to pray, folks. We're... Uh, we're in serious trouble all over the world. The Islamic bad guys are, are wrecking havoc all over the world. And it's very simply that. That's the devil. The devil. Amen. You got something? For our, for our, for our nation to turn back to God. Amen. You know, there in Second Chronicles... 
God said, uh, I'm going to cause three things to happen to my people. Now in the Bible it says that he caused drought, no water. The Bible says he also caused the locust to eat up the crops. And other pestilence to come upon his people. God brought that. He said, I brought it. Didn't just happen. I brought it, he said. Now those were farming terms that he used. Locusts. They could go in and devour a, a crop just immediately. <laughs> and uh, no water would kill the crops. And other pestilence. Well, most of us aren't farmers today, and so we're not too concerned. Some of us are about the water situation. <clears throat> but um, the pestilence that I believe God has brought in has been the Islamic demonic worship. They're taking our kids and making them pray to a false god. And so... That has come upon us, and God has brought that upon us. And sometimes we wonder, well, why would God allow that? Well, because we've turned our back on God. And then in Second Chronicles 7, 14, he said, But even after I bring all that on you, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. So, whatever has come upon you and me and us, let us go to the Lord and confess it and get forgiveness from him. And he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we praise God for that. Dr. Ronnie, lead us in another praise song, would you please? Okay, how about two little ones, Pastor? <laughs> well, one little and one a little longer. The blood of Jesus cleanses our hearts, births us into the family by the Holy Spirit. We're in the family of God, and we're in the kingdom. And then the Lord Jesus tells us that that's what we should seek. 478, seek ye first the kingdom of of God's two little stanzas seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you and then the, the little the little verse about prayer ask and it shall be given seek and you shall find knock and it shall be opened seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. Once again, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. How many of you know from experience that God answers prayer tonight? Let's, how many of you know? All right. So the pastor talked about us going to the Lord. Our brother mentioned going to the Lord tonight for our nation, claiming his promises. And we come to God because God says, the Bible tells us to taste and see that the Lord is good because God is good all the time. Sing it with me. God is so good. 
God is so good, hallelujah, God is so good, hallelujah, God is so good, He's so good to me, He cares for me, He cares for me, hallelujah, He cares for me, hallelujah, he cares for me. He's so good to me. God answers prayer. God answers prayer. Hallelujah. God answers prayer. Hallelujah. God answers prayer. He's so good to me. Sing it out. Jesus is real. Jesus is real, hallelujah. Jesus is real, hallelujah. Jesus is real, he's so good to me. He's coming soon, he's coming soon, hallelujah. He's coming soon, hallelujah. He's coming soon. He's so good to me. I praise his name. I praise his name. Hallelujah. I praise his name. Hallelujah. I praise his name. He's so good to me. I love him so. I love him so, hallelujah, I love him so, hallelujah, I love him so, he's so good to me. God is so good, God is so good, hallelujah, God is so good, hallelujah, God is so good, he's so good to me. One more time, sing it out, God is so good, God is so good, hallelujah, God is so good, hallelujah, God is so good, he's so good to me. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord for his word and praise the Lord for all that he does. Job is known as a guy who had a lot of patience, put up with a lot. And I want to share with you just a few words from the Word of God tonight in reference to Brother Job. Down toward the end of the book, it says, Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything. That thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew, yet, knew not. Here I beseech you, and I will speak. I will demand of thee and declare unto thee, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. You come to this church by walking in the door or by watching on television or listening on the radio. And you come to see God. And God is here. Not just because this is a church, but because he wants to meet you here. And I hope tonight that you have met the Lord Jesus Christ as your own personal Lord and Savior. Because if you have not, 
No amount of coming in the church, no amount of watching on television will do anything for you except you come to the Lord Jesus and believe in him and accept him and receive him as Lord and as Savior. We have said it many, many times, but I want to say it again. There may be somebody here tonight, and you've just been pretending. But tonight can be the night that you can invite Jesus into your heart and into your life. The Bible says, first of all, you must acknowledge that Jesus is God. Not Allah, not Buddha, not a tree, not something else. But Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord and our Savior, is, was, and will always be Almighty God. Oh, we go astray. We do our own thing. But God is always there. He never leaves us. Nor forsakes us, it says in the scripture. And Job said, I went through a lot. But though he slay me, Job said, I still will worship him. So tonight, I want to ask you a question. Whether you're young or old, if your life were over tonight, would you go into the presence of Almighty God? The answer to that is, if you have Jesus, it's yes. If you don't have Jesus, it's not I don't know, it's a no. So I want to give you a chance, whether you're watching on television or listening here in the church, our own radio, Dr. Graham and many other great ministers over the years have said there's really three steps. Number one, acknowledge that Jesus is God. Number two, acknowledge that there's nothing you or I can do to go to heaven. And number three, we can invite him to come into our heart and into our life and make us his child. And you know, Jesus said in those final days, there's going to be some people that will say, did we not preach in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not heal people? Did we not play the piano? Did we not sing? Did we not preach? Did we not do all of this stuff for God? And Jesus didn't say, no, you didn't do it. But he said, the only ones that will go into my heaven are those who I know. Not what they did. Because he said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. For I never knew you. So no matter what you do, if you don't know Jesus, you're not going to heaven. I'm going to heaven when I die. Not because I'm a preacher. Not because I've tried to live pretty good. Not because I'm a Baptist or any other reason. Except. Way back yonder, 1964, I prayed and I asked Jesus. I said, Jesus, I know you're God. And I ask you to come into my heart and into my life and save me and make me your child. And he did it. And on the day that I die, I can say I want to go to heaven. Not because I did a lot of things, but because Jesus knows me. Does Jesus know you? I'd like to ask you right now to bow your heads and close your eyes. If you're here tonight and you have never acknowledged Jesus as God and never invited him into your heart and into your life, I want to give you that opportunity right now. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, 
watching on television maybe, but if you're watching, you would simply pray a prayer, something like this. You would say, I know that Jesus is God, and I know that I don't have him in my heart and in my life. And I ask him right now, forgive me of my sins and come into my heart and into my life and save me. And I want to say to you, if you prayed that prayer tonight, not now, I'm not going to embarrass anybody, but I want to ask you, sometime in the future, come to me and say, Preacher, on that Wednesday night, I asked Jesus to come into my heart and into my life. I never had done it before, but I did it now. And we'll talk to you about your position with Christ and talk about what you should do to follow him in baptism and so forth. But just thank God right now for coming into your heart and into your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I want to ask our ushers, because we always take another offering at this time for our regular group. And so our ushers are going to pass and give you an opportunity to give. If you've already given, that's okay. But we want to give everybody an opportunity to give. I want to remind you that we do have a special offering, and that is for the box, the blue box here. I think it's there. Yeah, yeah. That is for the Branson Cross. That's building a huge 300-foot cross there in Branson, Missouri. I had a lady call me today that grew up in Branson. And she said, the Lord had laid it on my heart. I wanted to just call you and ask you about the cross in my hometown of Branson. Thank you. And so I told her, the work is going on. And we praise God for that. Praise God for the opportunity to be able to give. This money goes for the church offering, the lights, the gas. In fact, if people wonder sometimes why we always take offerings and why we ask for money. I paid the water bill today. It was over $1,000 for one month. We use a lot of water. So make your showers a little shorter if you can. <laughs> We want you to get clean, but, you know, don't abuse it. The lights are on. I paid the light bill a few weeks ago for the month. It was over $2,000. So we have some pretty stiff bills because we're here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But I wouldn't change any of that. God will provide. He always has, always will. But he uses you and me as we give to the offering. Father, we ask you to bless this offering. Bless each gift and each giver. You know the circumstances, Lord. We don't, and we don't have to, but we know you provide, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, let me just share one praise report with you. Uh, as you know, our van broke. And Charlie's home to hopefully get it fixed. But uh, when that happened and he was gone, I went over to Enterprise and said, y'all got a van parked on our parking lot for free. We'd like to have the use of it. So they've given us the use of it for a full week. Amen. Absolutely no charge. So God has provided. Amen. Y'all pray for Charlie as he tries to get old van working again get it fixed and thank God for Charlie and thank God for all of you who do the work here at the church would you stand together with me please and let's have our benediction for the evening and thank the Lord for who he is and what he is in our hearts and in our lives father for each man and each woman and each child I come before you and say thank you for all that you have done in my life, in my heart, and in the lives of each of these men and women. And we thank you for that. Bless us. Give us a good night's rest and another day tomorrow to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen.
Good night and God bless.